welcome to episode 28 of the AMT podcast. Hope you guys are crushing it as usual. Back to winning ways for me, around 850 pounds profit, just shy of four figures. It should have been four figures, but something funny actually happened. So I was messing around with the safer gambling tools on Betfair and I set my daily loss limit to 300 pounds. What I didn't realize was that my liabilities could never exceed two, 300 pounds when it can't, when it, the time came to pull the trigger. Uh, I could. I wasn't allowed to do it. So I called Betfair and they told me it takes seven days to remove it if I wish to do so. So hopefully that's done in time for the Masters this weekend and the Grand National next week. Or maybe it was a blessing in disguise since I never had any three-figure losses this week. So, you know, I was taking over pr- pretty consistently. So maybe I'll stick with it. You never know. And it was all going well uh, Monday to Friday till I had a rare losing session on Saturday. I just couldn't read a race, just couldn't spot any opportunities on the races. Ended up closing the session at around 4.30. So I just sacked off all the late afternoon and early evening racing. Truthfully, I should have sacked it off at 3.30 after the feature race. Um, since I was already around evens and after that, the action's no longer televised. So the liquidity really dries up um, and I carried on and just ended up needlessly giving more money back. Hindsight's always twenty twenty, but, you know, in the heat of the moment when you're battling with greed and fear, and especially when you have such expectations of a Saturday, it's quite hard to pull the plug. But uh, we, we did that in the end, so thankfully it was only a small loss. Went out Saturday night, so didn't get a chance to watch the boxing. Wasn't too keen on the matchup anyway, if I'm honest, between Jermaine Franklin well, number 29 against Anthony Joshua. Turns out it was the right call to make since I heard it was a bit of a snooze. Um, having said that, while I was out, I did check my phone to see the odds and I saw AJ, his odds went from 1.1 to 1.4 at some point. So, you know, I really wanted to know what was going on. Um, turns out he was getting outboxed in the early rounds. Uh, you wouldn't think so, having looked at Tony Bellew's scorecard, but he rallied home in a pretty boring vanilla decision i really don't know what to make of anthony joshua at the minute this was the guy who was an absolute wrecking ball up until the andy ruiz fight he was just knocking the seven bells out of everyone devastating combination puncher with good hand speed now he seems gun shy he doesn't want to take any risks and he hides behind the jab i only saw the highlights of the fight but i listened to talk sport and ifl and the general sentiment was that he's not the same as he has been in his previous fights and Tyson Fury will rightfully be licking his lips at making the Anthony Joshua fight next. AJ's career seems to be in a bit of a limbo. Yes, he's finally back to winning ways after back-to-back losses against Alexander Usyk, but he's had three different coaches in his three last fights, and it's just so hard for a fighter to build any sort of momentum when you keep switching camps and grooving a style that's really going to bring out the best in just a supreme athlete that is in Anthony Joshua. And just too much has been invested in him at this point from Sky and all his sponsors for him to just be treated as a gatekeeper. So this really wasn't um, a good look, him going 12 rounds with a guy who's not even ranked in the the world's top 20. Um, You know, Eddie's probably going to be keen to make a rematch with Dylan White or maybe some other low-level opposition just to coast and get his career back on track and just milk him for all he's worth before Eddie cashes out on him on a Tyson Fury or Deontay Wilder fight. It's a real crossroads for Anthony. You know, this is a guy who's already achieved so much yet still has so much to give potentially. But, um, you know, can he find it again? Can he go back to that old Anthony Joshua? Um, He's at a real crossroads and, you know, we're just going to have to see how this arc plays out. Anyway, back to trading. So on the back of Saturday's losing session, I did rally back with a nice trade on the golf. And funnily enough, I made the exact same amount as I did the weekend before, which is quite rare. So it was nice to turn a a losing Saturday around into a marginally profitable weekend. But speaking of turning things around, that's kind of what I want to talk about in this episode. I want to talk about my longest losing patch um, on my trading journey and what sparked it, the loss that sparked it. With time and contemplation and journaling as to why it happened, it's amazing how easily we see things when we step back and um, we just stop everything and just just look at things objectively. I know I keep repeating 
the same talking points in previous episodes, but often you have to do that if you want to drive home a certain point. And because I was able to pull myself out of that patch and come back from it, I can now look back and understand how and why it happened to make sure that it never happens again. So it was back in 2021 and I couldn't have started the year any better. I was around 25 grand up for the first four months of the year. Racing, cricket, golf, everything was flying. I felt like I couldn't put a foot wrong. And that's the thing with momentum. When it's on your side, you're not really thinking about too much. And as soon as you start trying to analyze it and mechanicalize it, you kind of destroy its magic. Now, obviously, I wasn't betting willy-nilly. I have an edge in racing cricket and golf. But because I was executing trades so well, and I guess I had luck on my side, I was kind of riding it out and bending the rules a little bit. I was letting positions run maybe longer than they should have, including losing positions, which just seemed to bounce back uh, for those four months. And um, like I said, there's no science really behind why things just seem to go your way during good patches. Uh, you just got to ride them out. Anyway, because I was on cloud nine at the time and everything was going my way, I started thinking about how I can accelerate my income by you know, dabbling in other avenues. So that's when I started getting involved in crypto trading. Now, I've been buying Bitcoin since 2017, so I'm well aware of its volatile nature. But by that point, I considered myself no more than an investor and not a trader. So I had done my homework with regards to long-term projections in the price. And, um, you know, I was pretty much happy to ride out bear markets as well as bull markets because it was money I can afford to lose. It was, it was such a small amount at the time when I invested it. Um, but it really grew into something substantial um, just by adding to my positions over the course of six years. However, I wanted a piece of the short-term action and I thought it would be really cool to try something new and trade crypto profitably as well as sports. I thought it would be a good tool to add to my repertoire and it would save me the hassle of having to explain to people what being a sports trader is because people instantly pass judgment thinking you're a gambler, when in fact I'm not. Anyway, so I sold some Bitcoin, loaded up a futures account, uh, topped it up with some cash to around five figures, and uh, made a couple of trades, uh, made money rel relatively easily. But the truth was, uh, is that it was during a bull market. So literally you could buy anything at the time and it was going to go up. It didn't require any sort of skill. NFTs, gaming coins, meme coins, you name it. Everything was on an upward trajectory. Didn't require any skill. So I thought, you know what, let's up the ante. And uh, I started dabbling with leverage. I really wanted to feel that rush again. So I started with 5x, then 10x leverage. And by this point, I kind of knew I was out of my depth since my decision making became so impaired, which is natural when you go too big. So for every dollar the market moved against me, I would be $10 down and vice versa. So what happened was the wins were so big, I ended up cutting them early. Because I didn't want to lose any money, I kind of let my losers ride out longer than I should have, hoping they would bounce back. And I got away with it for a couple of weeks until it all came crashing down in, I think, the month of May when Elon Musk tweeted that Tesla will no longer be accepting Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin and other major coins had already started to taper off by this point, but that tweet pretty much sparked off the cooling period that's lasted till today. I think it's like two years now. Um, and Bitcoin in that time has dropped from an all-time high of around $60,000 to as low as $15,000. Anyway, I was leveraged to the gills <laughs> at the top of the market. Um, and I remember watching the market tank before my very eyes. Thousands of dollars accumulated, just vanishing in the space of hours. It got to a point where I was getting margin calls from my broker just to post more collateral just to keep my positions alive and prevent me from getting stopped out. So I kept topping up my account, selling Bitcoin, throwing more cash in it, um, just to keep my positions alive, praying this was just a brief correction and Bitcoin would continue its run to that mythical six-figure mark, which everyone anticipated. But every time the price bottomed out um, and turned range-bound, it just kept breaking its support levels and going to lower and lower points. And this madness went on for a few months before I all but wiped out my years of gains uh, in the space of a few months. In total, I think it was around 50,000 pounds vanished through trading cryptocurrency. I knew I was doing wrong. I knew the bull run was over as soon as the price was tapering off and as, as soon as Musk 
uh, tweeted causing that panic sell off, but I was just in denial about it. I couldn't bear the thought of losing pretty much six years worth of gains um, in the space of a few months. So I just kept digging myself a bigger and bigger hole until I pretty much lost it all. I was glued to my phone 24 seven, refreshing the markets every 20 minutes, half hour, watching and waiting, whether I was at the dinner table, while I was driving, taking a dump, getting out the shower, hoping this was just a brief blip. And I'd get excited whenever the market would rally back a couple of percent, thinking we're going to the moon again and adding to my positions. And I was leaving my overexposed positions open, never closing them, never taking any profit, um, just hoping that one big price correction is going to make me back most of my money. But uh, it was never meant to be. It was definitely the worst and lowest point um, in my trading career and probably my life. There was a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of withdrawal from friends and family. And I probably aged around five years in the latter half of 2021. And it created a real negative ripple effect across all facets of my life, namely sports trading. Now, sports trading has been my bread and butter for so many years. And I figured, you know what? I've started the year so well. Let's try and bet more aggressively and see what we can make back before the end of the year. And as you know, when you bet bigger, you win bigger, but you lose a lot bigger. And it's the losses which are more impactful on your well-being than the wins. And I was just on the six-month roller coaster where my trading was in limbo. Whatever I made, I was just giving it right back. And it's not that I, I didn't know how to trade anymore. It's just that my confidence was shot to pieces. At the back of my mind, I was trying to win back all my crypto losses through sports trading. And because that attitude sort of fed into my psyche, I started trading way out of my comfort zone, staking way bigger than I'm used to and just getting, just being out of my depth. I even started betting on different sports and different markets, which were totally alien to me. Just because I ran out of patience and I was staying in positions too long and just making every schoolboy error in the book. And when you're not making money for six months, um, you start questioning whether you even have an edge anymore. Was it all luck? Are you ever going to get it back? Was it all for nothing? And what I was essentially doing was just shifting the blame elsewhere instead of realizing that I did it all to myself. And after stopping and realizing, um, I realized that it wasn't the bear run that caused me to lose money. It wasn't my luck that I'd ran out. It wasn't the fact that I'd lost my edge. It was the fact that I had lost control. I became absolutely undisciplined in my approach, lazy arrogant and impatient. I wasted half a year sitting and hoping and praying things would turn around. And it wasn't until I stopped, just stopped altogether and really had a look at myself and what I was doing. And it wasn't until I took it on the chin like a man, owned up to it, accepted the loss, accepted how long it's going to take to make it back, went and went back to my game plan. And that's when the tide started to turn slowly. So I went from totally forgetting about money to just focusing on becoming a good trader again. And thankfully, I was able to end those last few months profitably. And this points to a harsh fact that the markets are just totally um, unemotional, kind of like life. No matter how much money you lose, no matter how bad your health gets or how bad your relationships get, there's always something you can do about it to turn it around. Sitting around feeling sorry for yourself, getting emotional and hoping things are going to turn around is just going to do nothing if you're not doing the right thing. You can't do the wrong thing and hope for the best. Sometimes you just have to stop altogether. Just take a break, step back and just reflect and understand why things happened. It's so important to understand what triggers you or prompts you into making bad decisions. In my case, that six month episode I went through was born out of impatience and laziness and greed. I was doing very well at sports trading. I got greedy and impatient and I just felt like, look, I'm in my late 20s and I should have a lot more to show for my hard work. So I just started dabbling in things I had absolutely no business in being involved in and that was crypto trading. And you know what? It's the best thing that could have happened to me losing that money. On paper, it was a huge setback. It was a lot of money. It was more than I could afford to lose. It affected my life in a big way, personally and professionally. But I made that mistake in my late 20s where I've got my whole life ahead of me. Had I done that later in life with a mortgage over my head and kids to feed and lost a bigger amount, it would have crushed me and there probably wouldn't have been a way back from it. This loss was humbling, but it was an essential lesson designed just for me. It was the markets telling me that you're lazy and you need to weed it out right now because 
this kind of thing is going to happen again and it's going to happen worse next time. I now understand more than anyone how important patience is and playing the long game. And that's why losing days don't phase me anymore. Needless to mention the fact that I don't risk anywhere near the kind of money I was back then. Everything I do now is very controlled and very deliberate. And whenever I have a bad day, I feel like I've worn these clothes before. I know what to do in this instance. Hence why my turnaround periods are so quick after losing. But one of the biggest lessons I learned from that loss wasn't even about money. It was about family. They saw me suffering. They saw me struggling. And they showed me real support that I needed at the time. I'm quite a selfish person by nature. And I really took them for granted. But that whole episode really made me appreciate um, the importance of having a support system in place. And having people around you that care about you and can understand your struggles. There's nothing worse than going through bad patches alone. Just like there's no better way of celebrating triumph with those that you love and care about. And I firmly believe that a big part of success is the team that you surround yourself with. Even if you are the executor, if you have the right people around you providing you that support, they have that understanding and that respect for what you do and are able to be honest with you and keep you grounded and just make your life easier, then it's going to play a huge role in your chances of getting to where you believe you want to go. There's many people out there who've experienced far worse uh, financial calamities than I ever will, and they've managed to rally back from it. That's not to minimize my experience or anyone else's, but sometimes context is necessary. And, you know, it's important to point out the things that things are never usually as bad as we make them out to be. Everything is relative. That middle period of 2021 was a huge stumbling block, no doubt. And 2022 was about building myself back up. And this year, I really hope to share as much of my journey as possible with you guys through this podcast every week where you get to hear about my experiences as I share my stories along the way of my journey and see what kind of money that I can make throughout the year. So whilst there is a bit of pressure, it does hold me accountable uh, in a way to you guys to make sure that I am about what I say. And hopefully this is my motivation and this inspiration somewhat to you guys who are looking to learn to become profitable. Or maybe you're a bigger and better trader than me who does listen and can empathize with some of my struggles along the way. So there's something in this podcast for everyone. And last but not least, hopefully you guys get a real time view of my progression as a trader, because I do have big things planned for myself over the coming years, starting with this year. My only regret with this podcast is that I didn't start it sooner. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. The sunset has happened really quickly. So now I'm now making this video in the pitch black. But um, if you did enjoy this episode, don't forget to like, share where possible, comment, subscribe. It's good for the algorithm. And um, yeah, all that good stuff. And I'll, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks. Thanks.